On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. At this point, like tens of thousands of customers, and we still place a huge emphasis on each and every individual customer. My sister, who was our CFO and handles all our logistics, still is very in depth. She has her hands in customer service daily, quite a bit. You know, she, she'll get on the phone with customers and talk to them for an hour. I do it once in a while. So it's, we, we figured out very early on, it's a lot easier to, to treat a, a, one customer really well and grow with that customer and have them grow with us instead of just looking for new customers. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high-performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I've got Tony Casandrinos, my brother Tony. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful, man. You're in a favorite spot of mine in the panhandle of Florida, and it's a, a close place to my heart. I've got a business there for a long time, but man, what is just a cool place to be for with a family and such, especially this time of the year, right? With all I'm the partiers? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like, was, no, get me out of here. Go to the beach early in the morning. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, Tony, I, I'm just excited to have you here. What kind of business do you have, brother? So I have a olive oil business. I'm I'm Greek and everybody in Greece has olives of some sort. We have a, a bunch of them. So we bring it over here to the States and share it with people in America, give them a really high quality olive oil that they should be consuming instead of the, the grocery store stuff. I love and, it. Uh, also do consulting on the side. So love it. I love it. I love how you, it's just so casual for you to say, I have an olive oil business. I'm <laughs> Greek. We have olives, you know? Yeah. It's like, okay, great. Well, it makes perfect sense. Logically, we know why we're here now. Okay, great. But I want to know, before we kind of get too much into your story, yeah. obviously there's like a practicality to what you do that I just love that part of it. But what's the deep seated why? Like you've already even been successful. So my question is kind of twofold. Why are you doing it? But why are you still doing it? You're still pressing hard. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I love it. Like I, I love seeing people's faces light up the first time they try it and they're like, oh, this is a lot different than what I've been using my whole life or even like chefs, like in high end restaurants and they'll try it. And I mean, at, at the end of the day, we'll probably talk about it earlier, later, but I, I'm retired from the military. So I did 22 years of that. And now I'm kind of just doing what I love type of thing. And I get to work with my family which is awesome. And we started the business sharing our olive oil with our friends. And now that friends list has just grown a lot. And but I still look at it as that. And at the end of the day, we just, myself and my business partner, who's my sister, you know, we love what we do and it's, it's just a lot of fun. And I get to go back to a Greece to work a little bit. So. Yeah. Well, first off, thank you for your service. That's an incredible uh, feat of 22 years. My goodness, my family is indebted to you. Um, the the piece that you said that I love the most is that we started sharing it with our friends and our friends list has just grown. Yeah. Why do you see that? Like, why do you see it as like your customers, as your friends? Has that always been a mindset? Has that oh, yeah. been developed Definitely. over the time? Tell us about that. Yeah. So we, I mean, we, we've got at this point, like tens of thousands of customers and we still place a huge emphasis on each and every individual customer. My sister who, you know, is our CFO and handles all our logistics still is very in depth and in she has her hands in customer service like daily quite a bit you know she she'll get on the phone with customers and talk to them for an hour i do it once in a while you know so it's we we figured out very early on it's a lot easier to to treat a, a one customer really well and grow with that customer and have them grow with us and instead of just looking for new customers you know I, i'd rather take a a solid long-term cut one customer over years than just constantly, you know, running ads and, and just trying to find new people, you know, and they will also become your best marketers. Yeah. You know, you treat them right. So you're hundred percent right. Well, and you have a product that ideally once people decide that this is my, this is my flavor. Yep. 
pun intended, Definitely. That they use it over and over and over again. So you shouldn't have to go get exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people always ask us like, what's our avatar? Anybody who eats food and cares about quality that they're eating? No, it's, it's pretty much everybody. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and you're right. Cause there's, I'm sure there's a big difference in the quality. And so yes, the avatar is everybody, but there's a certain, there's a certain group of people that probably just appreciate that maybe a little bit more. So yeah, I want to know inside of the, the story here, like, okay, you 22 years in the military, and then now I'm going to just create an olive oil business. Like tell, tell us the gap there. Like what was the story there? So there was no gap. I actually did it while I was on active duty. Okay. Okay. Never had any intention of starting a business. My sister and I actually grew up in the restaurant industry because our parents, you know, had a Greek diner, like most yeah. Greeks in America do. So our parents kind of pushed us away from that. Cause it's, it's you yeah. know, it's, uh, it's a lot of work and it's a, uh, you're kind of married to the restaurant. So yeah. At 18, I, I went off to the military and my sister, two years later, she went off to college and went into the finance world. So I guess fast forward about 12 years into my military career, I was stationed in Philly and I was, it's kind of like when the paleo world was kind of up and coming and sure. yeah. I was training at this CrossFit gym and I happened to have a case of my family's olive oil in the trunk of my car and we were having a birthday party. Just, just happened to have it in the truck. I had, well, I had gone home back to New York for the weekend and I just okay. brought it with me because my dad would import it and my uncle yeah. and they would sell it in the restaurant. Got so it. I just happened to have a case. So I, we had a huge spread in the gym. Like it was probably like, seriously, like 30 feet long of just food. And they had some like really not so great olive oil on the, on the table. So I was like, let me go get some of my stuff, you know? So I brought, I just brought the whole case in and put some on the table and everybody really loved it. So I shared some bottles with some friends and like, mind you, I was on recruiting duty at the time in Philly. And this is, I think probably 2012 ish, 11 ish. So I'm, I'm working like probably 70 hours a week already. And then the time I wasn't at work, I was kind of like living in the gym, but I started just sharing with some friends. And within about two, three weeks, I had all the other people in the gym, like asking me, Hey, can I get some? So I'm like, all right, well, I'm going back up to New York next week. It was, it was a drivable distance. So I brought back like two cases and it just kind of snowballed from there where I'm like becoming a olive oil dealer out of the trunk of our type of thing. But, but then about probably six months after this, I, I got orders down to Texas. So I'm stationed in Texas now, but all my friends from Billy are like, Hey, we want your olive oil. What's going on? Yeah. So. Long story short, I called my dad. I was like, hey, can you ship me down a pallet? Got the pallet. I started basically doing my own fulfillment out of my apartment at the time. And people would, I made a one page website where you can pay via PayPal, a PayPal letter. Like didn't know what I was doing, but I created this website and just started doing that. Like total part-time thing. I would leave work. I would go home and pack like 10 or 15 orders. That was just like word of mouth type stuff. And I would take them to UPS the next day after work. And I kind of did that for a few months. And then I was on a podcast actually. So I love doing podcasts now with one of my friends who ha was through Texas. And she's like, Hey, Tony, we're doing a podcast on olive oil. Well, the day it went live, I sold out of my entire palette. And I was like, Oh, maybe I'm doing something here, like an actual business. Cause even before that, I wasn't really thinking business. I'm like, all right, I'll sell our bottles to my friends type of thing, you know? Yep. Who, who I actually personally, and then a few, you know, I did that and then it became a lot of work. And I was like, man, I, I don't have time for this. I'm, you know, we're getting ready to deploy at the time. Like I've just like had a lot going on. So I called my sister. I was like, Hey, so I, I think I'm onto something here. Do you want to do this with me? And she's like, yeah, let's do it. So we kind of, we're trying to think of a name and we couldn't come up with something. So we're like, let's just use our really long name that everybody butchers and theme that the olive oil, we come up with a cool logo. And, and we just started importing it at that time in bigger volume. You know, we started, it's, it started taking traction. And from that one podcast, I learned very early on, like instead of you know, outside of my friend's base and the word of mouth thing, which I leave in today very much so, but you know, instead of looking for new customers and this was even before Facebook ads was a really big thing, you know, you could actually post something on Facebook and it would get a lot of visibility without paying for it. We, we just started looking for more influencers and affiliates and people who could promote our olive oil. Yeah. So that saved me a lot of time. And we kind of took that and grew our business with it yeah. to the point where 
and even that had a word of mouth thing because you know you have one influencer and their other influencers are listening to them or looking at their social media so they're like oh i want to promote that brand as well That's you know right. especially when they see why they're actually promoting it and what makes right. it different yeah. and then over the next six years while well, i was finishing up my career and you know still obviously that was like my priority and the business was a, a side thing there's a lot of points over those years where we kind of had to throttle back our business, which is probably the opposite of what most people have to do. It's because we didn't have the time. It was like yeah. myself, my sister, we had a few key people. I mean, we had a fulfillment center about a year after doing the UPS thing and packaging our own stuff. We had our fulfillment center, the logistics and everything in Greece where the production and all that happens. You know, we have family over there that kind of handles all that part, but you know, I had to get a web developer who could make a website that was way better than mine and, you know, a few other things, but there were quite a few points where we actually did have to like throttle back, you know, until I retired and we kind of set it up and it was a long time. I mean, you figure six years, we set it up for when I retired, my sister was going to leave her job as well. And she had a really good job in the finance world, but we kind of grew it to a point to where I could walk into doing that full time and she can as well. And we brought in a few other key employees slash people and huh. yeah, just the races that, you win. Yeah. When, uh, that really grew it from there. That that's when it, you know, we had a lot more time to dedicate to it. Yeah. Yeah. I love the story of, of the bootstrap, right? Like almost like an accidental business. Completely. Um, like we were not intending on <laughs> it, I it is now, you know? Yeah, well, I think is is a testament to, you know, a good product and a good offer. I mean, that's that's typically how business works is that it, it will grow mechanically or naturally. It doesn't mean that you can't do promotions or strategic partnerships. All those yep. things that you just mentioned, you just dropped all kinds of business principles and nuggets on us and just in your little quick story there, which is really, really helpful. But I want to definitely dive in further. I want to know why. Like, why are you, like, for you? Yes, it's family oriented. Yes, like you kind of stumbled into it. But like, what's like underneath it? I mean, I really love doing it. Like I love the people. Like I, I really like, I love all the, not, not so much just the business itself, but all the things that revolve around the business. Like I love, yeah. you know, going to shows or events like that are revolved around the olive oil, just, you know, mingling with the people. I love like the, some of the other networks I'm involved because of the business that wouldn't sure. exist without the business, you know, yeah. I'm in a, you know, different masterminds that really would not exist without business. So not that it's like become yeah. that identity or anything, but yeah. you know, a, it is in certain parts of my world, you know, yeah. for a long time, it was like the Marine Corps and that's like, that's your identity. And that's oh, right. Friends are in, in general, yeah. you know, where now it's, it's just like all different walks of life in the entrepreneurial world, you know, right. and well, that's um, kind of what I was thinking is that like, as, as far as like my, my second ask there is why mm -hmm. I don't ask the same question, but. You know, you spent a lot of time in the military, which is completely different than running a business, especially an olive oil specific business. Yeah. And so when you made that transition, it was obviously for a reason. And so it's the fulfillment side of it. Like not only do you love the product because it's your family's stuff. Yeah. It sounds like it's the the building of the pieces and the people. Yeah. It's definitely the people. Yeah. I mean, we 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 had the luxury of growing it to where not that we really didn't need the money. We already both had other careers. So it's not like you know, a lot of business owners, like it's a lot of them take on debt initially just to get it up and running. And it's like, we need to start hitting these KPIs or we have business anymore. Where for us, it was a little different. And I think it really helped things. We were able to like make the right decisions and the smart decisions instead of just, you know, sometimes having the flashy objects and, you know, it's yeah. like, we're going to put all this money into this because we need to, you know, bring back this much money. We we're able to just really go organic with it. And I think when you do that at the end of the day, it might be a little bit slower, but it's going to be better quality. Yeah. I was just going to really say what you traded instead of the, you know, shiny or the money or the all yeah. in like, oh, we got to do this. Otherwise we fail. <clears throat> you traded time and yeah. not to say one is better than the other necessarily. I kind of take the approach of what you did. Not necessarily that I want it to take forever. Yeah. I just think yeah. that there's a lot of false expectation in business where it's like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be a millionaire or Tomorrow, I'm going to have a business doing 50 or 100 or a million, you know, 50 or 100K a month or a million a month. Yeah. And it's like, that's that's probably not going to happen. And it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I have a limited mindset or that this person can't do it. It just means that 
over the course of time is probably how you're going to build something sustainable. Yeah, no, definitely. I think a big thing with that, I really, especially with like younger entrepreneurs is really identifying exactly, you know, a lot of times like those, a lot of numbers get thrown around in our world, you know, and it's really like, what's the purpose for hitting that number? You know, do you need to get to at first, you know, a million is a big number, then a 10 million, then a hundred million, but it's like, um, what are you doing it for? Why? You know, it's a lot of times it's just because that's what the people have been hearing from other people. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, Tony, I want you to go back into just some practical moves that you've made. I want you to tell us of a good decision that you made in the business that has led to a lot of your success, something that we can learn from and, and maybe even duplicate. I mean, hands down, like surrounding myself with the right people. Okay. Like you mentioned offer a little while ago. So we had an amazing product, like, you know, it's handpicked, it's organic, it's fresh, which is, is rare in the state. So we had this awesome product and I was, I had been driving traffic to with, through affiliates and influencers to our website. Sure. I didn't even know what an offer was when I retired from the Marine Corps. Yeah. So I didn't even have a landing page. It was just like all my traffic went to my website. So I went to a small mastermind on affiliate marketing. And everybody kept talking about offers. I'm like, what is this offer like specifically? Like, what is it? You know, yeah. the, the founder of that mastermind, I'm very good friends with her now, like four years after. And, but surrounding myself with people who are much smarter than myself in certain areas. Cause right. you know, I, I think a lot of business owners, it, it kind of like a lot of people are winging it in the beginning, you know, yeah. like learning as you go. Yep. So. I mean, that's something I always try to do is really just focus on surrounding myself with the smartest people possible in all the different walks of life in business. Cause there's so many, I mean, anyone who's been doing any sort of business knows there's like, it, it's like different compartments, you know, you've got your marketing, you've got your sales, you've got your, you know, finances. And right. I just really try and seek out purposefully experts in each field. You know, even like now with AI, you know, I'm trying to take, you know, where we are us utilizing it in our business and right. really try and seek out people who are really smart on AI or smart on copywriting or right. smart on ads, you know? So it's like, and I, I learned that very early on and just been doing that. I think that's a real big game changer, especially yeah, when you're first starting out, but yeah, also down the road too, you know, once you've gotten to, you know certain goals. Well, there's going to be other things that you need to learn or go to Daily. the next level. Yep. I love actually James Clear talks about this in Atomic Habits. Join a group of people who have a, a collective habit that you desire. Yeah. And then you even stay in the group once you've achieved that habit because it's the best way to keep the habit. Yep. <laughs> to stay Definitely. around that tribe of people where it's like, this is normal for us. The expectation yeah. of our culture, this habit is normal. So I just, I, I agree with you 100%. What about, let's flip the coin. Let's, what about a bad choice? Something that you did that just did not work at all. And hopefully we can, we can stay clear of that bad choice. Same thing. <laughs> just okay. the wrong, you know, that, How do yeah, we know the good from the bad, Tony. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, we've had some partnerships or aligned ourselves with some, you know, different entities or people that, you know, in hindsight, were a complete mistake, you know, and a lot of times when it's public as well, like whether it's, um, like in a mass market or, or you know, sure. your certain brands or yeah. other entrepreneurs, like if you are being promoted by somebody or aligned business-wise with somebody and maybe later on down the road, you find that it's not the right fit and you're kind of being represented by that entity, you know, it's like, yeah. so we had a few, not, not like a lot of it, but, you know, I've learned some lessons about who exactly you want to partner with, you know, and that can go with tech it can go with who's actually promoting your brand or you right. or vice versa you know so so with that being said i think it's really very important on a good and bad to really focus on who exactly you are dealing with you know with, with the business and you know now again going back to like you know we really myself and my sister you know we do this because we love it with that we don't deal with people we don't love you know or or go do things we don't love, you know, it's all there, there's, there's so many different people out there and agencies and things to do. And our time is our, you know, our most valuable commodity, obviously. So it's like, we want to be very mindful on, on who we're choosing to spend that. With. Yeah. How so. do you like inside of deciding? Cause I, you know, every relationship, you just don't really know until you exactly you know. 
So what, what, nice do you, what do you, yeah, exactly. What do you know now or what do you do now to kind of maybe filter that out a little bit so that way you aren't spending time with people that you don't love or the ones that aren't a good partner, that type of thing? A big thing I do, especially when it comes to like agencies and whatnot, is I really research and talk to other people who are using them, their services or partnering with them. Again, back to the mastermind thing that you know, like, that is a great way, you know, if like, we'll just say a Facebook ads agency, you know, I mean, we can research or I'm sure we all get bombarded with tons of solicitation emails daily, like, Hey, we can run ads for you or whatnot. But if I do have a ads agency that I know four or five of my other, you know, friends are using and they speak highly of them and not just like the results, but also dealing with them and sure, you know. Do they have integrity? Are they on time? You know, just all the things we like in our business. Yeah. Do they do that as well? And I would rather just spend some time, I don't know, I've had t- talking with other people is really a big thing for me now, nowadays. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a vetting process from somebody who has maybe already done the vetting. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Like I, I why think spend that, time doing it if someone already uh, already has done it for you? That's I mean that's yeah. that's in essence that's what we're learning from you right now, right? Yeah. And then, I mean there's a certain I mean there's just people in business that I trust. You know, it, same thing. Like if you're if you have a foodie friend who always recommends good restaurants, you know, right? I want to go out to dinner Friday night. I know who I'm going to ask. Hey, I'm in you know Kansas City. Where do right. I go to eat dinner? <laughs> you know? That's right. You know? So. Kind of same thing with business, you know, and, and vetting out different agencies or partners to work with. Well, I guarantee you that foodie friend of yours would give you a list of at least 17 different barbecue places, all of which are in a hole in the wall that you've never heard of that would all the have a nice barbecue, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> the gas station, exactly. Yeah. All right, Tony, those are great answers. I really appreciate you giving some feedback on that. I want to go to our, our speed round here. I want to talk about KPIs. What's the one thing that you would track inside of this fresh never tasted before like this olive oil business that you have? What's the one thing that you would track if you go into how much profit it's putting in the bank account? Okay. Why is that? Why is that your, your, your KPI? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, a business, that's really the main thing that matters, you know, right. again, kind of getting back to like the, a lot of big numbers thrown around. We, when, when I retired from the rain Corps, we were the number one selling organic olive oil on Amazon. Wow. But had I been doing the same amount of sales for or you know orders on my website, we would have been probably profiting about three to four x. Right, AOV is higher. You know, upsells that I can do on there. Yep. I'm not giving Amazon you know Split. a good chunk of that. I'm not spending to ship the product to Amazon. You know, that's just one example. But you know, a lot of times, and even like when it comes to ad spend, you know, if I'm spending. X amount to make X amount, but my profit margin isn't as high as if I was doing it maybe through my rewards program and people doing referrals to me instead, or just word of mouth, or just just really organically getting traffic for free because you know there's a bunch of different ways to do that. So yeah, like being on a podcast, exactly. Yeah, or that. So <laughs> no, and a beautiful thing about podcasts, they live forever. You know, I mean, we yeah. still get sales from podcasts I did six years ago. So, but yeah, so at the end of the day, if it's not like money in the bank, I just think that is by far the number one most important thing to focus on. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> you're, you're a hundred percent right. It's always interesting to see yeah. the, uh, the mindset, the way that the, that folks think. What, uh, what would you say is a good book or maybe a good resource, business resource for folks that want to grow their business? To grow it. I, I really love the 80, 20 principle. I think it's something people should really focus on. Uh, I think sometimes people get away from that. Tell us uh, more. That's something we really like to focus on in every aspect of the business is really that that top 20%, whether it's customers, whether it's our affiliates, um, right. whether it's what's driving in revenue, you know, what, you know, yeah, just pretty much everything, everything, but especially more than anything, our customers, you know, we really treat those, our top customers, you know appropriately, you know, set up free things or, you know, reach out, call, we'll, we'll call them, you know, and be like, right. Hey, how's everything going? You know, how's the oil, but just really focusing on those top 20%. And I think it's probably like a must read for anybody. Oh yeah. Even yeah, business that's, owners. that's a great, uh, just 
theory in general. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And for the listener who maybe doesn't isn't as versed in this, I actually have another podcast where I had a guy named Kerry Baskins come come on. And, and a lot of what we talked about on that show was this 80-20. Not only is it a, is it a theory or a rule, but it, you can apply it to every area. Everything. Of life. It's pretty, pretty nuts. But in essence, you've got a grid, you know, four boxes. You've got your AA box, your AB box, your BA box, and your BB box. And everything's going to fall 80-20, 64, 16, 16, and eight or four, whatever the last number is. I think it's eight. And you try to get rid of that 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 lower lower end client, lower end product. Boom, just get rid of it. Yeah. And then you've got your higher end product buying or your higher end customer buying your higher end product. And then maybe your lower end product or customer buying your higher end product. You know, so the, the matrix. Mm-hmm. The point is, is that when you really see it on paper, you're like, I spend all time or not all time, but like I spend way, way more, more time here than I should. In fact, I should just get rid of this altogether. Spend yeah. more time on on the people that are actually buying my product from my website, not Amazon or whatever, fill in the No, definitely. I mean, and I, even applying it towards like how, how we're spending our time, you know, throughout the day, like, big deal. Okay, that's another big thing that we do is what actually moves the needle. <laughs> what's moving the needle. And, and that's how I pri- prioritize my tasks is like, because obviously there's things that have to get done that do not move the needle at all, maybe, or, yep. but I do prioritize everything by, okay, what's going to bring in revenue today or tomorrow or this week you know, and uh, just really focusing on the very important things. Yeah. That's very right. easy to get lost and just bluff. Or- it is. It, it, how do you know as a, I mean, there might be a business owner listening right now that doesn't necessarily know how to identify what moves the needle. How have you been able to do that? So. I, I really look at every, t- I, so I use Asana for my task management sure. and I actually have a under, I'm, I'm very anal about my, my tasks and prioritizing them, but under, you can customize, create your different fields in, in Asana. And I actually give a, uh, I have three little tiers on, is this going to generate revenue, which is a green box with three dollar signs is this going to generate revenue this month a yellow is this going to generate some sort of revenue in the future got it and then i've got our uh a pink or light red which is this is a non-generating task yeah can't measure it so it's just like something i gotta do you know yep so and then so it i'm a very visual person so i've got this color coded you know list of tasks and okay the green stuff, that's immediate. That that's like, hey, I gotta get, get your money. <laughs> you know, so first that, that's how I do it. Pretty kind of simple, color coded task management way of doing it. So good. It, the it's actually not even the task management and the coloring. You just did a great job of that. But what you said underneath that is revenue generating and specific time frame of when the revenue yeah. is coming in. That is what's the determination for you of of what's you know gonna move the needle. Yep, so the needle is associated to what you told me earlier, your, your top KPI, which is profit. Okay, great. So how do exactly. I move the needle? Revenue generate. Today, yep. not tomorrow, not, not next year, today. I love it. So Tony, what do you think about intentionally networking or masterminding? You already talked about being part of some mastermind groups and how impactful it's been to sales. Uh, what else have you gotten from that type of environment? I mean, it's the most, for us and myself, I mean, it is the most important thing, hands down. Like, I can't. I won't even know where to begin on how much it's changed our business for the good, saved us a ton of money in multiple different ways and has helped grow the business in just like ways that we just never would have had. I mean, we're, we're literally opening up a new for our, our own personal fulfillment center. We, we've had a three, three PL for since we left UPS (laughs) (laughs) shipping at UPS, but, um, you know, my, my sister, who is not really the networking type, she's more of the behind the scenes, like number uh-huh. of French, but I gotten her into one mastermind that she ended up falling in love with it. And we were down in Cabo a few months ago, and all of a sudden she's having conversations with a few other entrepreneurs who are doing their own fulfillment center. And, you know, she's been one kind of itching it, but it, like push her over the edge, you know, and right. now we're moving in our own fulfillment center, but it's, it's just invaluable. Like I can't even explain how important networking is. I've, I've always kind of known that back to the Marine Corps when I was a recruiter. Right. A lot of stuff I applied in business is from recruiting in the military. And that's one of the kind of hardest sales you can really make is getting somebody to 
get four years of their life. And uh, I learned very early on in the Marine Corps, networking was key. You know, if yeah. I didn't need to know all these different people in the community, but as long as they knew who I was, when they were just having a conversation with somebody, they can refer them to me. Yep. You know, so I've really tried to apply that in business. It, the the more people you can know in all these different aspects of business, the better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm picking up several things, not only knowledge, just the things that you've learned and also your sister too, but even that example you gave of, of you guys being in Cabo and her talking with some other folks, I'm sure she got some practicals of like how to, how they're doing it, so forth, so on, but just the transfer of courage for her yeah. to walk away and go, I know that we can do this because I met somebody who's just like me, who's doing it. Definitely. And if they can do it, I can do it. For sure. For sure. I mean, it's a big jump, you know, it's going to be it's it's also allowing us to do a, a few other things you know having our own space is is really awesome in our own headquarters but uh, totally. we've been remote like since day one all of us in our whole team like six different time zones but which is interesting but you know just her being able to talk to other people that you can't have these conversations with the average person even like your friends or your family they just don't get it you know yeah, they exactly you start talking about oh we're gonna start shipping our own products and have our own offices and like what are you talking about? You know, so I got my favorite TV show. You're yeah, talking about that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, just put your so surrounding yourself by other like-minded individuals or people who are in the same space and understand, you know, the, the hurdles that entrepreneurs face or just different day-to-day -day things that just most people are not going to understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like, it's pretty much like a doctor, a brain surgeon talking to us about his day-to-day, -day. like, you know. Not going to even just. Exactly. So yeah, but networking is just so vital, like in every way, shape and form. Yeah. It's, it's great that you've given us some practicals because I think a lot of listeners, and maybe I'll ask your opinion on this here in a second, but I think a lot of entrepreneurs hear that they hear, even if they've listened to multiple shows, they've heard me ask this question multiple times and it's like, okay, so I understand that it's valuable. So it's, maybe it's a local deal in their city. Maybe it's a big mastermind group that where we go to Cabo, or maybe it's, you know, something online. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. But I'm unaware, uncertain of how it affects me today because I'm stepping into a room of people, some of which have information that I need, some of which have connections that I need, some of which maybe are going to help me down the road with some like bouncing back and forth or give me like transfer of courage. Like, I don't really know what I'm going to get from this. Mm -hmm. so you kind of just got to like go and see. Yeah, because that's one of those things you got to just kind of dive in, in my opinion. And yeah. I, I had never gone to my first mastermind till after I had retired from the military. Although we had little mini masterminds in the military, like, oh yeah, but that's a little different because you're being forced to go and, <laughs> you know, things like, just a little different. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think once, you know, people go and see, you know, what you can learn. I mean, I've never gone to an event or a mastermind that did not pay for itself easily. Like, and I'm in some expensive ones, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, sometimes yeah. You, you know, you got to pay to go to certain events. They're all different prices, probably starting from either free up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. But I've never gone to an event where I was like, couldn't very easily tie that. The information I learned yep. to a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And, and it could be like a completely sidebar conversation with somebody that you're not even thinking about generating revenue, but you get this information, you know, I mean... We changed one little thing in our checkout process from a conversation I had at a mastermind that I was not even thinking about discussing it. And it brought in six figures of profit this year. Like one little quick change in our checkout process on our website. And I would have never, we wouldn't have had that profit had I not been at that mastermind and had that conversation. And I could yeah. pretty much tie something like that into every single thing I've ever done when it has to do with networking with other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich defines a mastermind as a coordination of people or knowledge unto basically the same purpose or mission. Mm. And it's like, like you just said, sometimes I don't know, or sometimes I'm in a conversation that wasn't even part of the event, but I happen yeah. to be there. And it's this agitation of thought. You were talking yeah. to somebody about something that was potentially even unrelevant in that moment. So you thought, and it ended up agitating a thought and you were like, hmm, and then you go implement something. And that is like literally how a mastermind works. Like just yep. put me in a room with at least one or two other people that have some sort of a agitative way of thinking. 
and yep. just let's just let's just spar. Let's just go back and forth. Let me throw a situation, and, see what you see what you do with it. You know, yeah, and and just like having those conversations with other people in that space or whatever the topic is. A lot of times, I mean, I find myself, and I know other people do as well, like learning things just by explaining the way they do it. They're like, oh wait, I just said that. Yep, <laughs> I'm not doing that, but it makes sense, so I'm going to implement that. You know, I mean, I had, that's actually how I got into consulting. You know, because I. I I was like helping certain friends kind of set up their affiliate programs and, yeah. you know, uh, it's basically set up an affiliate program and an influencer program for e-commerce brand. And, you know, at first I was just like, cause I, we built our business off it. And so I'd have some of my entrepreneur friends like, Hey, can I pick your brain for 30 minutes or whatever? I'm like, sure. And then as I was explaining, you know, the way I do things, I would just throw in other things that I knew I probably should have been doing, but I wasn't doing. I was like, wait a minute. What am I not? I just thought of that idea, you know, and that happens a lot too, just in all different, you know, when you're having those conversations and you're going back and forth and discussing all these topics, yeah. you know, that, that just can't happen with people that aren't in that world. That's right. So. Yeah. Not dealing with the same stuff. Tony, I got a question for you about family. <clears throat> you know, <throat> it's, it's pretty, I guess, self-explanatory to know that in business, you've got to be a certain level of obsessed, a certain level of all in. But I think that the disconnect for entrepreneurs is that we don't we don't have that same with our family, right? So like there's this like balance that we try to connect or it, you know, it's just ah. Yeah. How do you obsess over your family like you do your business and particularly at the same time? Yeah, no, it's it's definitely interesting because my a lot of my family members are in my business. Um, right. That's even right. my mom now. Now that she's retired and she got, you know, she wanted to help out. So we're like, all right, we'll hire you guys to do some stuff. All right, mom. But yeah, exactly. So I do get to work with my family. That's yeah. like, you know, my parents and my sister. As far as my wife and my child, my wife like works just as hard, if not harder than I do, <laughs> like it, what she does. So I'm a morning person and I really like to get a lot of work done before anybody. I'm talking like 4 a.m. till, yeah. you know, a little bit later in the day. But I, I like working when there's not a lot of other in interruptions. What we both do is have like a set cut off work time where there's no work really being done because it could very easily become obsessive and especially when you love it, <laughs> you know, like, right. I mean, I even had going back to the mastermind, you know, I had to like, we, we haven't, well, he's not newborn anymore. He's five months old now, our kid and he's our first. So it's like, we really want to make sure we're present for all this cool stuff that is happening that our milestones and aren't going to be there for long, you know? So it's like, yeah. I think when we, before we had a kid, we really did. We just worked a lot and cause we both like love what we do. So it's like, whatever we're doing, what we like to do, we'd actually go on vacation just to work. We did do like a working vacation just to get out of the house and go somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah. But we both do like to work. That being said, you know, when you do have kids, obviously <laughs> they take up a lot more time. So what we really did is just really made a cut off switch to where you know, I'm not going to be checking my emails on my phone. I'm not going to really be taking calls unless it's completely urgent. But I think just I'm really big on schedules and, and my time. So I think just really, really, really setting apart work time and family time is important. And even getting really big on habits too. Like just even like little habits, like reading every night, doing, you know, a walk every day at a certain point or a certain time of the day. So. Sure. Um, so I think just setting up really good habits that are like non-flexible, like with the family stuff right. and, and really separating the two, it is, you know, but I'm still learning as I go with that. Yeah. Well, with, with a five month old, you've, you've got a lot of learning to do, which is great. Oh, yeah. I love, I love that uh, yeah, you're going down that journey because you're right. They do take a lot more time, but it should, it's a joy is what it is. Uh, yeah, it should, so it should fuel you for the rest in my For opinion. sure. Well, yeah, and that's kind of where we're at. We're like, why are we doing all? Why are we both grinding like crazy? We're both working like yeah, you've got like, plenty. What you know? So like, all right, let's have a because we neither of us really ever wanted to, but then we're just kind of changed our mind. So yeah, definitely changed everything. But it does give you a, a whole new perspective on how you spend your time. You know, and what and really just focusing on the even in, even in the business, it kind of goes back to that eighty twenty rule. Is just really focusing, you know, your time very, very just hyper-focused on what is the things I need to be doing 
yeah. what can I outsource out or have employees do or whatnot. And then just kind of doing that with the whole, from the minute you wake up to the time you go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. So being precise, that's the way, that's the way to do it. Tony, I've got one last question here for you. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You could whisper in the younger Tony's ear. What would you say? Mm. I, I mean, again, back with the time. Just like enjoy every minute, you know, literally just enjoy every minute. And you, and yeah, I would just whisper enjoy every minute because like it's something we can never get back, you know. And from a business standpoint, when you're first starting out, like I remember thinking we made 200 bucks a day. That's freaking awesome. You know, man, if we do that every day to where now it's like, oh yeah, that's a few minutes, you know, and it's like, but those were like the awesome days that like kind of laid the foundation of where we were going and what we were doing with everything. So, and, and I don't think you're going to appreciate, you know, once you get to wherever you want to be or which, you know, that's a constantly evolving thing, but once you quote unquote, kind of like made it to where it gets a lot easier than it was in the beginning in certain aspects without those minutes and those days, you know, you're just not going to appreciate it. And that's something I, I remind myself daily, our kid crying, like, I'm like, you know, I should still enjoy this, you know, cause it's not going to be here forever. And a lot of people don't have this opportunity. So. Right. Yeah. You're going to miss that sound. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, as, so. as, as, uh, as bad as it might be in the moment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Actually, it's funny. I was talking to a buddy of mine just the other day and he said that there, I can't remember what study had been done, but the, the pitch of a child or a baby crying is the exact pitch that does two exact opposite things in a, in a husband and a wife or a mom <laughs> and a dad. It's like, Ooh, I know that feeling. And, and of course she runs, how can I help? How can I, you know? And I'm just like, you know? Yeah. I'm lucky with him. I mean, he's just like, okay, he's hungry. That's not yep. just yeah, exactly. like, well, that's how we think it's practical. Like, right now, like, hey, okay. He's hungry. He's crying. It's he's one hungry. of four things, you know, like d- d- just go down the checklist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And with, uh, with that, like a lot of the, and there are like little military thing. And I, I think a lot of people can realize this is a lot, in the moment, a lot of the stuff that is not fun ends up being the best parts of life. I mean, and that's really what I think in the military, you know, you could be with somebody for a short period of time, like say two, three months, but you've gone through a lot of not fun stuff together, but you're a lot tighter with that person for life, you know? Yeah, remember. And, you know, I mean, even like you think back to like, maybe if you played football in high school, like double sessions and just like grinding in the summers, you know, but we look back on it, you know, that's the stuff you remember, you know, is all the hard things. So, and just really trying to, you know, just really appreciate all those, like the hard stuff because yeah. ultimately that's what leads to anything good anyways. That's right. So Tony, I want to give the listeners an opportunity to figure out how to purchase your incredible <laughs> olive oil, but also how can they find you just to pick your brain if they're an entrepreneur looking for some help, or maybe they're an e-com business and they need some consulting on how to build out their system. Yep. Cassandrinos on all platforms, you know, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn under Tony Cassandrinos. My email's on there. You know, anyone can reach out to me. Pretty, pretty easy to find. Awesome. Sounds so. great. Well, we just appreciate you being here. We'll put all the links for them to be able to not only purchase your incredible product, but also to be able to connect with you in the show notes and give them the opportunity to do so. You've been great sharing here, just real of the real today. And so I just uh, thank you for your time. Blessings on your family, your friends, your, you. your, your business, all the moves that you're making here, even with your family that you told me about before we hit the record button. I just am so excited for you guys and thankful that you were here. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries and now interviewing literally over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings literally exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe. 
that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 kings. Talk soon.